thing's for sure, this piece cut a whole lot easier when I didn't go through two layers. I cut it back about half of an inch further, um, rather than going back this way, so I didn't cut through the, yeah, you guys get the point. Looking down inside here, you can actually see the water line. I mean, check that out. And it just happened to sit lower than the hole, so the water had no chance of escape. The bottom of the tube seems to be fine. There's no holes along the bottom of it, so if any moisture does get in there, there is no way for it to get out other than to get out through the, well, the points that are higher than the bottom of the tube. I tried shining a light through and looking around on the outside of the tube underneath the bus to see if there were any holes anywhere, and damn it if I just can't find anything. There's no holes, or apparently no holes, so all the water must have come through on the outside. But I think what I'm probably going to do, rinse this through, get all this crud out of here before I weld everything back together. Make sure it adequately dries and chase the entire um, thing out with just some oil, uh, even some old used motor oil. I mean, anything. Just coat the inside of it, make it all nice and sticky in there, and uh, slap it all back together. And I think that'll help to prevent it from rusting in the future. Uh, down the road, of course, this thing's not just going to be sitting in the woods in mud. <laughs> so for whatever it's worth, it's going to be uh, a whole lot drier. Otherwise, it's good to go, and all the splines on everything inside also look to be pretty good because everything still slides together and comes apart once, of course, I broke the rust free. All right, well, there we are. We got all of our welds hole sawed out. I just drilled them all out. This time it was six evenly spaced holes. The other side it was seven, and they were kind of irregularly spaced. So I guess that's a difference between a uh, professional and a novice working in the Volkswagen factory. <laughs> Anyways, um, this looks pretty good. You can see that we did cut back further than the uh, the inner layer. So now when I cut this back, I need to cut back about an inch and a half from here, which is roughly going to be just on the other side of these holes, right about here. The only downside to cutting this back as far as it, I cut it this time versus going back to here is that when I cut these out, um, the holes previously would um, reach over the edge of the metal here and that actually served as a benefit because it would evacuate all the chips out the end of it. As opposed to using the hole saw on this, I had to keep going around and I, and I kind of swiveled it around so the chips could fly out. Anyway, it did a good job. It did a decent cut. It just was a little more effort that I had to put into it. So, yep, there it is. Let's go ahead and get it sawed off and uh, get everything test fitted and see how it turns out. This little tip comes to me by one of my viewers, William Kilcagney, really, really nice guy. He said, why don't you use a hose clamp wrapped around the tube instead of using a piece of tape? And he just, just, yeah, nailed it. Uh, this is better than any piece of tape ever because you can tighten it down and it ain't going to move, it ain't going to peel off, and it kind of serves as a fence for you to drive your um, blade against. So. The other big benefit was, I have to cut this back an inch and a half, the tape is one inch, uh, to those, those of you out there that are metric sexuals, it's a 25.4 millimeter, <laughs> and this just happens to be exactly half an inch, so if I tighten it down right at the edge of the tape, I got my inch and a half right here. So this should, um, this should work out real nicely, what I'm going to do is just overlap the tape just a hair, because I do have to... Um, assume that the blade width is going to be cutting out a little bit from over here also so yeah i just need to make sure we get an extra blade width overlap and we'll get that tightened down anyway that looks like it's going to work out really well william thank you very much for the tip i do appreciate it well since this is the second attempt i gotta say that this turned out a lot better than the first side did my cuts are a lot straighter they're better placed it's just everything about it was better again thank you william very much for your hose clamp concept uh for marking a uh, tube that worked out really nicely. There's the piece that came off in one piece. I didn't have to split it or anything else. It uh, was a little hard to get it off. I had to use a punch and a hammer and I just simply stuck it in one of the holes and just knocked it until it came apart. It took a little while, I'd say about a minute until it finally split free, but it's just because of all the rust that's in there. And I mean, you could just see the rust between the layers. It's uh, pretty significant. So of course, these two pieces, they bonded themselves together pretty good. Well, let's go ahead and take it out to the bus and see how it turned out. Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I am your host, Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with my bus, Volkswagen bus sitting here behind me. And as you know, I've been really trudging away at getting these uh, torsion bars narrowed. You saw from the beginning of the video how I started working on the other side. It was amazing just uh, the water line on the inside of the torsion bar where the water had been trapped inside of there and just rusted out the, the bars, the important parts that aren't supposed to rust. The tube you could probably get away with a little bit, which surprisingly, no damage to. 
But we got that rinsed out, cleaned out, and lubed out, the whole works, and it looks like it's going to be okay. I've got the uh, thing put together, and you see the rest of the video, I'll get this thing installed. And I'll get the trailing arms finished once and for all, finally. It's unbelievable just how dark it is out here. It's only 5.30 in the afternoon right now, but, uh... It's cloudy like it's going to rain. And it has rained here in almost two months. I mean, like, no rain at all. We got a very, very light sprinkle about two months ago for, like, a minute. Like, I could have peed harder than that. I mean, it was just absolutely ridiculous. Just stupid. <laughs> and then today, as I went to the hardware store, um, when I was over there, it, it poured for about 30 seconds. Just enough to wet the roads, and then it stopped. And that was it, it for rain. I mean, I got nothing here. If I walk through my yard right now, through these pine needles that, you know, they're so dry, and the dirt that's underneath them is kicking up just dust clouds everywhere because everything is just so incredibly dry. It's just a desert here right now. So anyways, uh, we're working on Gregory. We got some merch on today. Uh, check out duckshit.net forward slash store if you're interested in it. Duckman Cycles t-shirt. Of course, we got Earl, Classic Car Creations. He's working on Eleanor right now. And um, check out all my different social media links. You'll find them up on DuckShit.net. So I really appreciate you guys watching. We're going to roll that intro. We'll be back right after this. Okay, here is our trailing arm assembly along with the spring plate on here. This is all Beetle stuff except for this which is Porsche, but we're going to blow that off for the moment. Um, we've got our bus torsion casting end in the back. This is what needs to be re-welded onto the tube. This would naturally go right onto here like this. And then there's a cover somewhere around here. Yeah, here it is. This is the cover that would then go over that. You see this Beetle tube sticks out. If I have to cut this, I will. I'll cut a hole in that. We'll see. I don't know. Don't know what that's going to come out to yet, but we can't just put this all into place and then figure out where the pivot point's going to go because this is a big moving flexible thing and there's so many different ways that this piece can be oriented. So what I've got, and I picked this up some time ago, for actually for the fastback, but this is a jig and this jig allows you to uh, essentially bolt it to the four bolts on the torsion housing and then at that point this is now a solid object. You can put the torsion pivot. You can then put the trailing arm pivot right here on the end. Put the stock bolt into it. Bolt it into place. And actually put that on backwards. It'd be nice if I did it straight. But I'm looking in the camera instead of looking at what I'm doing. And uh, this is actually the wrong side. That's right. Duckman is a douchebag. Hey, Duckman. Get your shit together, man. This is the correct one. <laughs> He's actually, uh, it's important that these jets gotta come over. Always when I'm recording. There was no jets for the last 15 minutes, but then we get one now. Anyway, this is it. It's already got the bolt inserted in it, but it needs to go over the end of this. Boom. And then, of course, once we've got this in place, then it's real... Did I do that backwards? Yeah, I'm still backwards. Hang on here. Boy, am I awkward today. Doesn't help that I just had me a drink, either. <laughs> All right. This goes on there like that. Of course, the bolt's going to come out and come over. This will then go up to the torsion tube and get welded to it. But in order to know the correct position that it's supposed to be in, this jig will determine that. But we have a problem. It's kind of a simple problem, but it's a problem. Now, this cover is for the spring plate of a beetle. A bus spring plate cover is a little bit bigger. And none of those holes line up. They're close. They're all really close. The, uh ones that you see furthest from me are actually off by about quarter of an inch and the ones on the bottom are off by about half an inch so what I need to do is I need to weld a little piece of plate here on the bottom the part that's closest to me and uh, re-drill this hole it's going to be drilled in probably right about in the center of this little piece here these I can just grind out and we'll do the same on the other side. And if I go to put this onto a beetle, it'll still work on the beetle because the old holes will still be there. And of course, they will be holding it together this way on the inner side. So it shouldn't have too much play in it. Even if there's just a little bit in it, the good thing is, is that pivot point is so close to the fulcrum in the middle of this that it, it would change by so little that I don't even think you could measure it. So I'm not too worried about that. But anyway, i got to hit the workbench with this thing and figure out how exactly I want to do that. This doesn't look to be like it needs to be something I need to overthink. should be really simple. But if I can get this tool set up properly, 
we can install these without too much pain. Well, I figured the best approach would be to go ahead and get these clamped together to get the holes lined up. And then uh, I welded them on there. So that plate is now part of the tool, which will make it a whole lot easier to drill them holes out and not have to worry about this thing moving around. And of course, Jet's gonna fly over once again. Yeah, I like the idea of welding it. It ain't going anywhere now, and everything looks to be lined up. So this is gonna work out nicely. Well, that came out good. You can see my two additional holes that I made out there. I made some wings to wrap around it. These two holes, they uh, kind of figurated themselves. That's perfect. This is the right-hand side. I don't know who manufactures these. If you're watching this video, copy my design now. This will work for all Type 1 platforms, Type 3, as long as this is long enough. I can't wait to see on the fastback. And uh, it'll also work for people converting split-window buses. So, yeah. You can't beat this. This is uh, this is gonna go on. We're, we're about to try it, and I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. The cover fit over it just fine. All right, let's get down below and see what happens. Okay, hopefully I can clear the tripod and not knock anything over here. <laughs> Here's our jig. It's gonna go over just like this. First bolt in there. So far, so good. One more. Oh, was that one out of alignment? Nope, it went in. Okay, I thought I was gonna have to uh, work on elongating one of the holes a little bit. There we go. Here it is, it's in. Of course, this hasn't been welded yet, but uh, you can actually see that this is all where it needs to be. There we go. Let me give you a better look up underneath. All right, here we go. Up under there, you can see the end of the jig. That's where our mount is gonna attach to. Now, I can see already that one of the frame horns back here is uh, interfering with it. That's exactly the way it works out on a Beetle, or even on the Type 3 for that matter. So I'll have to uh, cut a notch out of that, the same size as the box that goes over the end of this jig here, and uh, recess it into that, and then weld it all into place. We got a jig, and I need to replicate the same thing for the other side, but uh, no, that worked out splendidly. That's exactly the way this thing should have always been. So as I said, whoever's manufacturing these things, I don't know who's watching this video, but if you make these, copy my design now. <laughs> All I did was put a little ear on either side, elongate the holes, and you saw it, every hole is now a figure eight. And I had to put a little notch out of the piece down in here to make sure that it cleared the bump stop on the bottom. Other than that, this thing fits, and it fits quite well. And I found a new rust hole too, by the way. <laughs> the only thing that's holding together is paint. <laughs> okay, I brought the entire jig inside along with the end casting here from the rear torsion and I put the um, trailing arm bracket on it also and um, I did this on purpose inside versus on the vehicle because it's a lot harder to get these rough cuts made to fit on that torsion bar. These um, pieces are actually made for a beetle and as you know the uh, bus torsion bar diameter is much bigger by almost a whole inch so this has to be trimmed down considerably to make it fit so I made a tool I bought a piece of PVC pipe 3 inch it just happens to fit right over this and quite well I might add and uh, that dropped in there then I can fit the piece of the bus over that to give me the exact width and where we need to be. Now I think I still need to trim just a little bit out of it, just a little bit more, and as you can see it's a kind of a jaggy fit anyway. But um, <clears throat> now I've got a somewhat straight jig for the jig. <laughs> That's right, I'm jigging it up today. I think I've got something that um, it gives me a good starting point anyway. Now I can get underneath, I can put this sucker back in, get this welded on, and then lay the jig into approximate place. Then I can get the rear frame horns cut, so that way this here can get mounted appropriately. Anyway, this is uh, this is looking pretty good. I think what we've got here is, is alright. This will work. You can see this is the other side, and you can see just how much I cut off of it. Um, it's probably not a good way to show you. Let me pull this back off here. You can see we cut off. Cut off almost about 
half an inch or maybe even a little bit more than that. Yeah, it's tough to tell from that angle. Well, there it is. Yeah, roughly half an inch. Now, that'll work out. I think we're good. Let's go ahead and see if we can get it mounted up on the bus. All right, well, we got that welded in there okay. Not the greatest looking welds, but it's thorough, and it's not going to leak. But we're good with that. Now we need to put our mount back in here. Doing this one-handedly because it's impossible to get a tripod up under here. But, uh, well, I might just prop the camera up somehow. Everything's pretty close. It looks like it has to be cut and recessed about, uh, about half an inch, three-quarter inch. Not quite a whole inch. This is probably going to be the best place for the plasma cutter, but uh, we had a little mishap the other day when we were using the plasma cutter, and uh, there's a lot of irony in it. Let me show you. While I was using the plasma cutter, I felt my leg getting hot, and I actually set my plasma cutter on fire. <laughs> Somehow the um, loose jacket that's on this wire managed to start burning. And the surprising thing is, it didn't catch the pine needles on fire, and that's the ironic part. Everybody expected my backyard to burst into flames because I'm welding over cardboard or over pine needles, but no, I set my welder on fire. So anyway, I'm going to have to fix some of the wires in that. So when I pull the trigger now, it's not working, so something in here has broken. It's probably just a control wire that you see right there. Anyway, I'll get that straight, but we're not going to use that today. That's a very, very rough cut I made with the Sawzall. I still need to grind off a lip here, and I still need to cut off another uh, quarter to an inch to a half of an inch. But this bracket, I'm going to put the jig on it and see how well it fits with the jig to see if it, you know, it's going to cock it in place. But uh, I think we just about got the hole. I just need to finish trimming this thing up to make it fit. That's uh, that's amazing. This is coming together, and it's coming together. Oh, I hate to say it, a little easier than I anticipated. Now those are like the words of doom. You're not supposed to say that, but <laughs> I think we're uh, I think we're doing okay. That fit pretty well. I did not expect it to fit on the first try. I figured after I trimmed it out on the PVC pipe, I was gonna have to cut a little bit more. But no, it's uh, it's bang on. I hardly see any gaps at all, except for over here where I have a little bit of a jaggy cut. I'll uh, pull this bracket back out, grind that little nipple off, and then push it back in, and I think it'll be fine. But, yeah, on the first try, I don't believe it. I haven't even finished trimming out the hole yet. I still have to trim back to here a little bit, and then I'm going to bend out this piece to touch this, because there's actually a bit of a gap I can put my finger between. I get those two pieces bent together, I think it'll be a whole lot stronger if I can butt weld them. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is looking sharp. Wow. The cuts look a whole lot nicer when I clean them up with a hole saw, don't they? <laughs> All right, there the mount is, welded into place. It was a little difficult to get this portion of it welded in there. I had to uh, cut a relief cut and then bend it back. Otherwise, I was going to have to fill a patch in there. But uh, that made the two pieces come together and closed it real nicely. Real nicely. Uh, it looks a little wet because I did coat it with uh, a little bit of uh, cat piss. If you're not familiar with the cat piss, it's phosphoric acid. That's something that I use whenever I uh, do a little welding, whenever there's a little bare metal. I try to get it coated. This car, uh, well, this bus, is going to need a ton of phosphoric acid all over it. But we'll get that when we get to it. Another thing I did is I used a little fluid film. This came from Earl over at Classic Car Creations. And I sprayed it on the torsion bar and on the end of it here. And I don't believe this. As you remember, I had to slide hammer the things out of here. But watch this. <laughs> that was effortless. Absolutely effortless. And of course, I could pull it back through. So the spines inside have also been lubed. I sprayed this uh, and it managed to reach all the way through the uh, torsion bar. I'm probably going to have to do it again because once I start welding on the other side, I'm going to heat it up and it's going to burn some of it off. But uh, yeah, that's just amazing to me that the torsion bar is actually able to just be pushed through. I've never had a torsion bar on any vehicle work that well, even when greased. So maybe using fluid film on your torsion bar is the answer. 
All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw that arm, the diagonal arm over here, or trailing arm, whichever you wanna call it. We're gonna bolt that sucker in, and uh, we're gonna get a look at it and see how everything works out. I think it's gonna be just fine. Well, everything bolted on there real nicely. I think that spring plate is still going to come out. I'm probably gonna cut up the bus one. I thought I was gonna go back to the beetle one, but the bus torsion bar will not fit inside of that tube. I thought maybe I could trim out the inside of it with a lathe, but I got a feeling I'll just make it too thin. Anyways, we're gonna wrap this one up. We got one side all oh, pretty much done, except for the spring plate. So, licky, likey, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly. That way you get updates every time I upload a new video. Don't forget to check out Duck Shit Donna for all my different social media links. There's a ton of them up there. You guys need to check it out. If you want to follow me in all different places and you want to see what's going on when I don't get a video up, there's always something going on in the background. Check out my Instagram. You're probably going to see some stuff that you haven't seen me do yet. It's up there. You'll find the links on duckshit.net. Thanks, you guys, for watching. See you next time.